Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. If you are always here or if this is your first time, if you are listening on the web or on the CD, welcome. Welcome into this community of faith. Welcome into this community of love. If you are visiting this morning, please say hello to somebody. And if you're here often and see somebody you don't recognize, please go and say hello to them. A couple of quick announcements this morning. The first one is that the Saturday morning session meeting that everyone I'm sure is looking forward to who's on the session will take place on Saturday the 20th of August from 9.30 until 1.30. If we are quick about our business, we shall finish and get away sooner than that. But we've got four hours to discuss the important things Important things that are also going on on Saturday mornings at the moment are the Saturday morning summer coffee mornings. A wonderful time to come and share in the sunshine or in the not sunshine and have a cup of coffee and a biscuit and a bit of cake and talk together. A wonderful thing in the Chalmers Hall. I encourage everybody to come and have a bit of time together at one of those coffee mornings. And this morning, as always, there will be tea and coffee and biscuits and chat and laughter and all those sorts of things in the Chalmers Suite after the service, which is that way. So if it's raining heavily, go that way. If it's not, go outside. Um, follow people if you don't know where you're going. Let us take a moment to still ourselves as we come to worship Almighty God. When you're at the end of your rope, when you feel you have lost what is most dear to you, when you are content with just who you are, when you've worked up a good appetite for God, when you care, know yourself to be blessed. We gather in this place. We gather in the quiet. We gather to learn. We gather to praise. We stand as we are able, singing together hymn 336. Christ is our light, the bright and morning star.
As we went to bed on Friday night, as we woke up on Saturday morning, as we continue to go about our daily lives, we are aware of another mass shooting. We cry out for Munich. As we wake this morning, we hear of a suicide bombing in Afghanistan. We cry out for Kabul. Wherever in the world, whatever the reason, whatever the aim of the attacker, our response has to be strong and clear. Jesus taught radical love in the face of violence and oppression. It is not easy, but it is simple. Love, not hate. Hope, not despair. Inclusion, not exclusion. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, as we look into the world, we sometimes don't know what to pray. All we can do is allow our hearts to groan. Tears to fall from our eyes. In the face of all we see, we see your love. We see the helpers, the carers, those who stand up and say no not hate but love Lord take us on a loving adventure open our hearts to the adventure expand our knowledge of your goodness and allow us to see you more clearly Ready us to follow and journey with Jesus, seeking to expand our hearts and minds, allowing ourselves to fully love you as you have loved us, allowing ourselves to give to others as we have been given to. Even though we might be wary, you have readied us for the journey. You have readied us for the adventure. Lord, your light is strong. Your love is near. Draw us beyond the limits which this world imposes to the life where your spirit makes all life complete. Holy God, you bless us in ways we don't understand. Your love is never withheld, even when we look only to ourselves. We are sorry for not acknowledging how blessed we are. We are sorry that sometimes we associate the material things of life as being the top priority. We are sorry that at times we fail to show due care towards those who are mourning. We are sorry for the lack of respect we show to those who are different from us and our intolerance towards others. We are sorry for the words we use or the actions we commit that disturb the peace of others and result in acrimony and tension. We are sorry for mistaking the signs of the kingdom and seeking to enforce our idea of holiness upon others. Merciful God, in sorrow we admit our failings before you. Yet as we approach you, we discover that your care for us remains strong. You call us blessed, for despite our ways, we remain right with you. And we now pray the words that Jesus taught, which can be found in the order of service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is really quite warm in the church this morning, so unless you want me to melt into a puddle, um, I appreciate you allowing me not to have my jacket on and understanding why so. But this week I've been thinking about lots of different things as I've been out and about visiting and seeing and speaking to people. I've been thinking about action figures and heroes. And the one I've got here in my hand is one that sits in my study. And I know that from a distance it will look like Superman. And I know that when it was created, it was supposed to be Superman. But a friend of mine has had about Superman's face with a black pen and drawn a beard on it. And this was given to me to remind me that I cannot be Superman or a super minister, even if I dress with my underpants on the outside. But this is quite good because it's Lego and it's a superhero. And if you lift his foot up, and you might be able to see, and you press his front, his foot lights up. It's a terrible torch. You can't see anything with it, but it's quite good fun. But was thinking about superheroes and thinking about what they do. They're, they're always kind of somebody who's in some way quite strong or maybe quite quick so the Hulk would be somebody who was very strong and the Flash would be very quick they might have lots of fancy gadgets like Batman they might come from somewhere and have superpowers according to what we have like Superman and all these people we think oh, it could be fun to have all those superpowers and be like them that would make us great But something when you're looking at that, at looking at all these kind of superheroes, is they're all this kind of distant thing that's maybe if we think enough about it, we realise we're not quite like them. But in the eyes of God, and when God looks at what makes people super, it's not being the quickest or having all the money to buy the gadgets or having being born somewhere so you have some sort of innate superpower or being very strong it's not these things we're going to have a reading from the gospel according to St Matthew um, in a short while and it's from the Sermon on the Mount and the reading is called the Beatitudes and Jesus talks about who is blessed who is right with God and it's not the strongest or the fastest or the richest those who are hurting those who comfort those who hurt those who try to do the very best that they can and in God's eyes and in my eyes they are the real superheroes those who love people for who they are those who go out of their way to help other people those who just know that life is hard because sometimes life is just hard and that's okay so when we think about who heroes are whilst it might be nice to come in a fancy box and have a beard painted on in God's eyes we're all heroes anyway we're going to sing together we're going to sing about doing the heroic work of God In a wonderful, simple song, we stand as we are able, singing together hymn 351, Jesus' hands were kind hands.
This morning's reading is from Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 1 through to 12, and is on page 968 of your Pew Bibles. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor, pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. We stand together as we are able, singing hymn 21, Lord, teach me all your ways. We come to our second Sunday about thinking how we are intentional in our life and faith. Last week, we were alive in the story of creation, finding our part in all that God has made. This week, we are alive in the adventure of Jesus, recognizing that this is a different and slightly counter or very countercultural thing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please be in my words and in all of our hearts and minds. Amen.
John Vanier, the founder of the Lash Community, which is a community based in the Christian faith, although it's open to all faiths and none. The Lash Community seeks to provide care and belonging to those with learning difficulties. John Vanier has said, People may come to our communities because they want to serve the poor. They will only stay once they have discovered that they themselves are poor. And then they discover something extraordinary. That Jesus came to bring the good news to the poor, not to those who serve the poor. I think we can only truly experience the presence of God meet Jesus, receive the good news in and through our own poverty, because the kingdom of God belongs to the poor, the poor in spirit, the poor who are crying out for love. Today we are looking at going on an adventure with Jesus, and I guess that means looking at what it is to side with Jesus. We are going to explore where Jesus' priorities lie and what that means for joining in the adventure. So in the Beatitudes, in the reading that we had, what was Jesus talking about? Well, it's a certainty that in the Jewish-influenced society of the day when Jesus was speaking, the people listening would not have had any problem with the notion of what it is to be blessed. They would get the fact that Jesus was speaking about not a state of happiness correlating to worldly circumstances, a happiness that is fleeting and fickle, but instead his words indicate a description of the spiritual attitude and condition of people who are right with God. The problem and challenge for the people listening and for us today is the categories of people listed by Jesus as those who find it easiest to be right with God. It's a very clear and a very difficult countercultural list. What we have here is Jesus painting a picture that is paradoxical to our own way of assessing life. We assume certain circumstances of life lead to a better experience of light, life and a far greater sense of being blessed. The Beatitudes subvert these assumptions and make us ponder our own aspirations. They are aimed at making us think about how we live out our life, about the road we walk down. It is clear that there is nothing glamorous in this list of circumstances within which a person is blessed. It is good and it is encouraging that those who find themselves living these life experiences are made right with God and will know themselves to be blessed. For these people, for the folk who find life hard we are grateful that Jesus comes with a gospel of good news bringing hope and love and a sense of worth but for some of us sitting here whose experience of life from a worldly point is generally what we might consider better than the experiences of the people referred to here how easy is it if you live what could be called a comfortable life to be made right with God? In the context of what Jesus is saying, is it possible for a rich man, a bold and confident person, a happily married woman, a soldier, a well-liked person, is it possible for any of them to be blessed? The list of those mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount does not include those people whose lives are 
maybe seem to be all right. The easiest thing for us to do is to satisfy ourselves by saying Jesus only picked out a few groups for the inferred state of being blessed. And there must be many more people and groups who will find themselves right with God. Jesus just gave a short list, but that's not all of it. That's the easy understanding, but the text asks, asks us not to accept an easy understanding. Perhaps as we ponder these things, we are meant to stretch our minds and assess our aspirations and assumptions of around where blessings are found. In relation to the context of Jesus' words, we can point to the fact that Matthew, whose account we are reading, is steeped in Hebrew tradition. The way that he frames the Sermon of Jesus bears direct correlation to the promised Messiah of the Old Testament, who would bring good news for the poor. The similarity between the Beatitudes and Old Testament passages, such as Isaiah chapter 61, are striking. In his words, Matthew points to Jesus as the fulfillment of the promise of the Messiah, the one who brings the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the one who brings the kingdom of heaven. As we think about that, it's important to remember, as I've already said, that Matthew was a Jew writing for a Jewish audience. So as we think about heaven, we need to consider that context. The Jews of the time would never utter the words Lord or God. Even saying the name of God it was blasphemous. The very utterance of God's name was so holy in that context that no individual could do it. It's in light of that, as well as looking at the other Gospels, we can see that when Matthew speaks about the kingdom of heaven, he's speaking about the kingdom of God. And this isn't some distant, far-off place where we aspire to go at the end of times. It's not where all the people named in the verses we've read today are to be found. No, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is here on earth now. It is to be found amongst all God's people. And as this is now, that means it's part of being alive in Jesus. Jesus is telling us that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they are comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fulfilled. Blessed are for the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of, of heaven. Jesus is saying, being part of God's kingdom is turning what we know of the world on its head. It's subverting our understanding. The people we should aspire to be, our heroes, our superheroes, are not warriors or politicians or those who become rich or famous at the expense of others. It's not a hero like Superman or Batman or the Incredible Hulk or the Flash or anybody else that you can think of in that vein. 
to be part of the kingdom of God. To side with Jesus, we are all called to be a hero. But not a hero who functions on their own. Not a hero who, even if it is for the benefit of others, is settling some old grudge or trying to win some distant prize. Jesus is saying that the heroes are the complete opposite of that. The heroes are the brave and the determined activists who strive for peace in a proactive way. The people willing to suffer and sacrifice for what they believe. The heroes are those who make the choice not to conform to society and choose to model a new set of values showing a new set of ideals that determine success. The heroes that Jesus talks about do not do this as individuals. This all happens within community. None of these activities can happen in isolation. They are all community actions. Mourning grieving, hurting. Submitting. The meekness that is spoken about is submission. An ox is meek when it submits to the yoke. The yoke of Christ is easy. We submit in seeking justice, in being merciful, in actively making peace, and even being persecuted. All of these things require other people to be around you, for you to be engaged in the lives of others and other people engaged in your life. So how do we respond to this? I suppose it comes down to how we respond to these questions. How do we feel about this countercultural hero that Jesus is calling us all to be? How do we fit our lives? And how do our lives fit into this new model of living? What do we think of being called to be a peace-seeking, community-living, comfort-giving hero? Something that I find scary in all of this is that this is the very start of world-changing ideas. These practices are the things which can really and truly make life better for everybody we meet. What is abundantly clear to me is that this is not an adventure to seek if you want a quiet and easy life. Following Jesus, intentionally living out the, teachers, the teachings embedded in the life of Jesus as well as the words he speaks in the Bible. Walking down this road is difficult and it opens us up to be laughed at and made fun of. It opens us up to difficult and challenging situations. But as we've read in the text, those who suffer this treatment will be blessed, will be made right with God, are right with God. as we consider these words, we will find a multitude of different angles by which to interpret these 12 verses and apply conclusions to our own lives, worlds, and discipleship. In many ways, that's the beauty and difficulty of biblical texts. But we can explore the words in a way 
that resonates with a specific thought we have in our own minds. As we prize open a particular aspect of the text, we discover a window to something important for us to discover. Sometimes the window allows us to see a big picture, some broad understanding, a broad action we must take. Sometimes the window feels very small. But it always reveals something that helps us on our journey. To help us as we try to intentionally live out our Christian faith. As we've been thinking about the Beatitudes, what's sometimes called Jesus' manifesto. It sets out guidelines for how we are to be alive with Jesus. Of course, it doesn't give us specific tasks to undertake, although it does give us clear priorities to hold. We have to be somehow countercultural. We have to favour those society discards. We have to challenge prejudice where we find it. But I ask you all, what does that mean for you? How will that work out in your life? And as you find answers to those questions and seek to side with the people that Jesus sides with, that is when we can become fully alive in the adventure of Jesus. Amen. We stand as we are able, singing together hymn 710. I have a dream a man once said.
please be seated. As our offering for the works of the church at both home and abroad are uplifted, the choir will sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. During the prayers of dedication and intercession, there is a response as printed in the order of service. So when I say beautiful people, you respond, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. Let us pray. Lord, take us as we are and take what we bring to you as a sign of our devotion. We are blessed. We are the lucky ones. During the different phases of our lives and amidst the different challenges, you bless us in providing us with what we need. Friendship, security, wisdom, comfort, love, many different expressions of blessing that are appropriate for our particular needs. Thank you, Lord. These gifts we bring are yours. Bless them and bless us. Lord, your words are challenging, yet resonate with love, openness and acceptance. We consider the world you gave us and we seek to look on it as through your eyes. Your eyes lead us to see a new vision of the world that allows us to see people as they really are and recognize that despite the hardships of some people's existence, they are blessed. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. Today we pray for those who are financially poor. They need our help. They need fairer policies and a more equitable sharing. 
beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. We pray for those who cope with loneliness and grief. They need our comfort and they need time to heal. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. We pray for those who feel they are timid and who are sometimes overlooked. They need our respect and they need help for their voice to be heard. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. We pray for those who are so selfless in their determination to work for a better world and show mercy to others that they sometimes forget to look after themselves. They need us to show a willingness to take up their cause and ease the burden of their work. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. We pray for those who work for peace, those involved in reconciliation. They need the world to listen and pay attention to what they say. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. We pray for those who are insulted, tarnished by reputation or labelled as different. They need the world to understand there is no place for discrimination. Beautiful people, children of God, blessed are those whom God loves. Lord God, we are more than just your people. We are blessed, for you call us to discipleship. You make us right with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to our closing hymn, I would like to remind you all of the summer coffee mornings the next will be this Saturday morning at 10 o'clock in the Chalmers Hall. They are every Saturday morning during July and August. After we have sung Be Thou My Vision, we will stand for the blessing and benediction. As we start, if you would all join in, if you are willing, with what is printed in bold. But as before that... We stand as we are able, singing together hymn 465, <coughs> Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
say together, we will go and strive for peace. We will go and bring folks comfort. We will go and challenge prejudice. We will go live and love for God. Go, you are blessed. And as you go, may the peace of Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once more into his arms.